I think you got it on the wrong. Can you switch it there you go. All right, my disclosures we can skip over. So I'm gonna start back and I, I actually have to say, Dave did a great job, uh, which is very unusual for Dave. I don't know if he's still on, but he, he did just, a, he actually did a stellar job. And I, I have to say, Dave and I have a lot of the same philosophies about trauma and how trauma should be done. So the question becomes, our, our brain colleagues in, in the, the head trauma as well as the stroke guys have shown, shown us that time is so essential for our patients. But for some reason, the spinal cord injury hasn't gained as much popularity and adherence. Uh, several years ago, this is a paper we published in PLUS One called the Staska Study. I just really want to show it to the residents because it was one of the first uh, prospective cohort studies that really looked at improvements depending on timing of surgery. Animal data completely shows that patients do better. I mean, animals do better, such as rats, uh, with earlier surgery. But this is one of the first studies that showed you could get a two-grade improvement if you operate on people earlier. And one of the points here that I think is left out of this is that the Asia A patients are the ones that have the most to gain from this. So these are the patients I think we should be most aggressive on, whereas a lot of time you saw Dave's talk was about Asia Cs. So to me, that's one of the things we should uh, go about. The second thing we need to do as a society and as a whole is we need to get our patients to us faster. This is a list of the Pennsylvania Trauma Society we looked at many years ago, but you can see our society for some reason, spine trauma seems to be the lowest things on the agenda to get them to tertiary care hospitals. So I think messages for you guys to get out to everyone else, guys and girls, is you need to get the patients to the place where they can get treated ASAP. So I want to swing back and talk about pharmacology. Pharmacology is probably then the biggest disappointment in spinal cord injury. Numerous trials are out there. Um, and you guys should go to clinicaltrials.gov if anyone's used this. It's a great source to look up different trials. About every six months, I go and look up spinal cord injury to see what new therapies are out there. But you can go for any trial or anything. Any, uh, thing. Uh, and Dave talked about this. Probably one of the best studies we've done was Bracken's study on spinal cord, uh, on solumedrol. Uh, he went through the different changes. There was no change in evidence, but the, the um, – recommendation went from a recommendation to a don't use it, which is kind of unusual in the way you do evidence-based medicine. Uh, I worked with the AO group and we actually re-looked at this analysis and we had multiple different medical specialists and even included some spinal cord injured patients. If you look at the uh, steroid use, it did not change mortality, but it did change uh, some degree of morbidity in the terms of more pneumonias in patients. Um, and you got to also remember, we used to have a large amount of GI bleeds back in the old days when we started the steroids, which are almost non, not, not, not seen because of proton inhibitors. So I believe it should be on an individual patient's basis. And I'll give you another scenario that cracks me up. If you say this, the spinal cord injury that's a 25-year-old AHA comes in the door, surgeons won't give them steroids, the same exact patient who the, who the surgeons do an ACDF on and plunge the bone into the canal and they lose all their signals, every single one of them says, give them steroids. So I don't think we've really figured out what the answer is. What I'm trying to give you is this is a gray area. So think about it for each patient as an individual. A side was an interesting study. It was done in shock trauma, Charlie. And I bring it up only because Geisinger did this and he became too confident in his results. And what he did is he did the 800, he did, a huge study with patients. Long story short is if he looked at neurologic improvement with urinary recovery, they actually did better and he would have gotten FDA approval. When he set up his, he set it up for a two gain in the walking diameter. And so he didn't meet that metric for the FDA. So they didn't let it prove. Rilazole is another uh, drug just got, just got closed actually. Started out by AO. Uh, Michael Failings, this is uh, one of the first studies we did on it, which showed some effect of it. Uh, it's now been recently closed because of the financing due, due to COVID where we had to shut the, the program down. One of the big things in spinal cord injury trials now is you're going to see a lot of this. And I think some of it's been learned from the rheumatology people is instead of using a, a protein to get a reaction, what they're trying to do is they're trying to limit negative side effects. There's something called the apoptosis or the Rho uh, system. The Rho system is when you get a neuron and it breaks down, its myelin causes the 
myelin breakdown products will attach to a nerve and it sets up a self-destructive apoptosic pathway. So this was a, a satrin was a, a drug which is actually an antibody or an antibody which inhibits the row. Uh, it was started off by Lisa McCatchen's group in, in Quebec, uh, went into a trial. This is our, our first study, kind of showed us that uh, the thoracic patients are too sick to get, get really uh, medicines. And so most of the studies are now are only cervical. It got reintroduced, was bought by a different country company, and unfortunately, uh, we have a paper coming out on this. The effects of the medication were not uh, were not good, so it was closed, and we are publishing a paper. This is a this is a, a new paper. AV Medications just came out with this. They opened this study. It just started. It's an MS drug where again they're using an antibody to block a reaction, and you're going to see this over and over again in the next five to ten years because I know about another five different medications which are being made to block channels uh, to prevent hyperexcitability. Uh, switching gears totally, cell-based therapies. Uh, I just want to go through a couple of these. This was the first big study. It was a macrophage study uh, taken out. It was started in Israel. It was done in the U.S. I'm putting it up really quickly because the conversion group in this study had a 27% conversion rate. And this is why you need prospective studies. If I told you that 27% of the Asia A patients would convert, you would buy this drug in a second, or you should, because it's much higher than we, we, th we thought. At the time this study was done, our conversion rates were about 1% to 2%, and we could have a discussion about why our conversion rates are now up in the 20%. But the interesting thing is the conversion rate in the control group was 59%. And this never came up in the whole study, but it's very interesting, and, and asked the questions are, are we doing harm with intraparenchymal injections for spinal cord injury. Uh, anyways, it, it got closed, but fortunately, other trials came out. The problem with stem cells, and this is a paper we wrote a while ago, is there's no data. So everyone uses the word stem cells, and you gotta understand that stem cells are, are a huge, many different products. Uh, so you gotta make sure that what cells you are, what's the viability of the cells when you get injected, and all these uh, other issues. The other thing you have to remember is any cell you can put in someone can turn into something bad. This is a series where a kid got injected with stem cells and it metastasized throughout his body and became teratomas. Uh, this is Stem Cell Inc., a company uh, one year out after spinal cord injury was inclusion in these pa patients. I was lucky to have two patients involved, direct parenchymal injection. So we're talking one year out from spinal cord injury, chronic spinal cord injury, and they improved by six points which to me was unbelievable. The problem is it wasn't good enough for the venture capitalists, so they closed the study down. I keep on going forward. This is Geron Company. Uh, it was born, it was actually out of Baltimore. Uh, they, they had multiple different things, got started, uh, did a study. It actually then got closed, reopened. And this is what you see with these small companies over again. They're going into a phase three trial right now. And this was their last study, uh, which shows the, significant conversion and improvement rate with the injections in the acute trauma populations. So this is actually a pretty exciting area for, for them. Now, I, I really quickly was trying to go, we're gonna clip over this, which was the uh, blood pressure thing we talked about. The only thing I did want to show is this is Nick Theodore's work, which, uh, which we talked, uh, Dave talked about a little bit. There seems to be a synergistic effect when you do perfusion and CSF drainage. So if you look at blood flow, the green line at top, is what you get if you do both versus doing one. So that actually increased patients' blood flow to their spinal cord versus other modalities. So there is something to that. And this is sort of what I wanted to go on. There's something called the in vivo therapeutics. And it's kind of an interesting uh, study, and I'll, and I'll go into it a little bit. If uh, basically they did 19 patients, they did get a uh, conversion rate of 80, 83%, which is good. But what I wanted to do is show you this. This is, this is what happens. And this is a spinal cord. And when we ultrasound these patients, we notice they all have syrinxes with dead cavities of tissue in it. And as you go thin, as part of the study, you have to put this, you have to do what a myelotomy or open up the, the spinal cord. And when you do this, you get all this necrotic area uh, tissue that comes out of the spinal cord. And so it goes back to what I was talking with Dave is, do you need to do a myelotomy in order to open up and get all these probably toxic things out of the spinal cord in order to let the perfused area get perfused? This is the cylinder that you put in there, which um, 
it's interesting. The rate of recovery is faster than I would think what you would get with neuronal regrowth, which goes back to my question is, does the myelotomy really the thing that really helps these patients? Last thing I want to talk about real quickly is this is Lisa McCar uh, not Lisa, uh, Susie Hackema's work with electrodes. And what we found is um, electricity is a very good thing to the spinal cord. This is a real quick uh, thing I want to show you where probably in our lifetime for spinal cord injury, bypassing the spinal cord is going to be much more of an option because of how fast functional is going versus biologics. Long story short, this is a young kid, 25-year-old. Uh, he at 19 was a C5 Asia A. And what they did is they actually put this, I don't know if you can see it, they, do, they did brain mapping to figure out where his motor cortex was. They then put a stimulator or grade into his primary motor cortex. And God knows how come this doesn't get infected, but it goes outside the head. And then they attach this area, this electrode into it. And he would just think over and over again about, I want to move my right arm. I want to move my right arm. And then they process that over and over again. And then they hook external electronic links onto his arm. And when he did that, I'm hoping this works. You'll see very quickly, this is him at the start. This is an age to A. So he had no spontaneous mo motion. And this has been going, this is over and over for three and a half years. And this was done a while ago. This is an older, and this is Ali Rezai's uh, video, just in case anyone wants to uh, talk to him or get about it. But you'll see. This is a complex motion for a complete patient. And all they're doing is they bypass the spinal cord. So this is, now he can get Amazon with his card. And so in conclusion, this is a, this is a further uh, along. Uh, in conclusion, I just want everyone to read, all spinal cords aren't the same, injuries aren't the same. There's many different things going on. Extremely exciting time about spinal cord injury. Um, and I really think the future is encouraging and exciting. And thank you. Thanks very much, Jim. That was uh, pretty, pretty amazing stuff, especially uh, all of the functional uh, improvements that Dr. Rezai is, uh, was uh, demonstrating. Any, any questions? Uh, comments, Dr. Sanser, if I may, this is Jens Chapman at SSF. So first of all, between Jim and Dave, we had a true highlight one-two punch of uh, modern spinal cord injury care. So thanks for putting those on and moderating that, Charlie. It's a true treat to hear those. I hope that we can count on both uh, for the uh, annual uh, wintertime spine trauma course, again, in greater detail. Jim, for me, one of the biggest problems that we face now are geriatric spinal cord injuries. Uh, this is becoming a bigger, bigger deal. These patients are usually myelopathic. They have a stenotic cord. They fall down and uh, they have a pretty bad cord injury. How do we pick up central cord versus a complete Asia A uh, cord in the early 24 hour period to help decide treatment? So, so uh, you know, uh, great, great point, uh, Jens. And I think of central cord as a completely different animal than other spinal cord types of in injuries. And I don't know why I do that. It's probably wrong. I think the one of the issues is we need to get better metrics on how to measure these people. I don't think we have really good outcomes because when you look at the central cord injury and he comes back to your office, he's a victory because his motor score gets up to what, 98, 99. But the problem is their lives are destroyed because they lose their fine motor control and their gait. And so I think the first thing we've got to do is step back and get better objective measurements for it. And two is the theory that it's a central cord injury is probably incorrect because if you look at animal models, you can cut the cortical spinal tracts on monkeys and primates and get and, and they still able to walk and everything. So I think there's a lot we need to learn about it all the way from biology to how to make them better. Tim, this is Kojo. Oh, sorry, I'll be quiet. Sorry, this is Kojo. Uh, why do you think there's a delay in, in getting people to tertiary care centers as, as opposed to say cranial trauma? What, what, do you, is there a real study or just uh, maybe an opinion? Because it's nationwide, it's not just Pennsylvania. No, no, I think it is. It's actually funny because you guys probably get everything to the West and we probably get a lot to the East uh, in, in, in the state of Pennsylvania. I think it's just a perception because you got to remember back and in, in, in we're not old enough, 
but I sort of came right after the whole subarachnoid things. And so the residents don't know this, but for the neurosurgeons, people didn't operate on aneurysms. They let them sit in the corner. And if you lived for two weeks, then they'd operate on them. So I, I think there's a big perception from the ER doctors and everyone that time's not that important for spinal cord injury. We're going to send them to the hospital. And I think that's one of the messages I want to bring out to all the residents and everyone. Meet with your emergency room. But if they see you taking that patient right to the emergency room, that changes the, you know, when your head injury comes in, then your guys are down in the ER and they're taking them to the operating room, right? When the spinal cord injury guy comes in, I mean, our, pol our policy at Jefferson is very similar to yours. They go to ER, they hit the MRI, and they go right to the OR. So we try to do them exceptionally fast. And I think it, at least at our institution, a lot of people understand we're going to take care of this patient ASAP. But a lot of the community places, I don't think that's been, message has been passed down. Good to know. Thank you.